From 1894 to 1915, Colt Firearms sold a special version of the classic single-action army revolver. Named for the internationally known shooting venue in England, the Bisley was intended to be a competition piece. The Bisley became as popular as the single-action army, if not more so, in the hands of shooters who realized that the gun's special features made it unnatural for speed shooting. And, for the pure competition shooter, there was a Bisley target model with much improved sights. The revolver made its debut at the 1894 British Commonwealth Championships match in Bisley, England. In all, more than 40,000 Colt Bisleys were made between 1894 and 1915. More on the Bisley matches later. While the original Peacemaker worked very well, especially when fired with one hand, it was slow to quickly fire accurately because it rolled in the hand with recoil. The Bisley version was developed to keep the gun under better control and speed up recoil recovery. It starts with the distinctive Bisley hammer, which has a spur that is lower and wider than the original SAA type. Shaped in such a way that its highest point is below the line of the top of the frame, this hammer is easier to reach with the thumb of the shooting hand. Of course, like all Colt SAA variants, the outline of the butt is formed by the shape of the back strap and trigger guard, and how these parts mate to the mainframe. On the SAA, they're shaped to make the gun point beautifully, but complicates firing. On a Bisley, they created a longer butt that forces the hand higher and takes recoil more straight to the rear. To finish off the modification, Colt fitted the Bisley with an enlarged trigger guard and a wider, more radically curved trigger. There's no doubt but that the modified Bisley is a better handling, easier to shoot handgun over the SAA. While it all started for the purposes of competition, Revolver shooters took rather quickly to the Bisley and used it for just about everything. A decade into the 20th century, Colt wasn't selling many single actions of any kind. Then, in 1915, Colt sold the last Bisley. Uberti USA, however, revived the Colt Bisley with its close reproduction. Note that this is not the target model with enhanced sights but is essentially the SAA with the Bisley grip frame, which is truer to the everyday carry version of the revolver. According to Wikipedia, surveys of existing Bisley show that a much larger number of four and three-quarter Bisleys, perhaps as high as 62%, have survived as compared to the five and a half and seven and a half inch barreled guns. My Uberti reproduction of this fine revolver is the seven and a half inch version, as I prefer the cavalry model over most. The frame is color case hardened. The hammer spur is low and wide. The trigger is wide and curved, and the grip is a perfect reproduction of the original Bisley grip angle. The two piece grip panels are walnut and finished in the usual Uberti red and in a high gloss clear. Some folks ask me why I did not just go for the Ruger Bisley single action revolver. I usually answer because the Ruger Bisley is a Ruger interpretation of the Bisley and Elmer Keys number no. five revolver and is not true to the Bisley revolver itself. Whereas the Uberti reproduction is as close to the original as one can get. The grip angle of the Bisley is indeed different. The grip angle of the 1873 Colt single action army revolver is swept downward and back, which allows the revolver to rotate in the hand and the recoil, which places the hammer near the thumb of the shooting hand for quick cocking of the action. The Bisley grip, however, is downward and in toward the revolver. The gripping of the Bisley is straighter up and down and the longer butt was intended to force the hand higher on the grip and mitigate the upward rotation of the revolver during recoil. 
Moreover, the lowered hammer spur is well within reach of the thumb, even when the revolver is not in recoil. The front sight is a tall blade, and the rear sight is a notch in the top strap of the receiver. Target models had an adjustable rear sight and replaceable blades for the front sight. While the version that I have is not a target model, it is reminiscent of the revolver that would have been found in sashes, holsters, and waistbands of honest and dishonest men alike at the time. Lawmen and outlaws liked the grip of the Bisley. The Bisley became as popular as a single-action army, if not more so, in the hands of shooters who realized that the gun's distinctive features made it unnatural for speed shooting. The original Bisley specifications included a range about 250 yards. It weighed 1 pound and 13 ounces. Its length was 11 inches. It fired a 44-40 WCF. The 44-40 Winchester centerfire round could be used for both the Bisley and a Winchester rifle. It, of course, was a single-action revolver, which fired from a six-shot cylinder. The Bisley disassembles like any other Colt SAA. The hammer is brought to the half-cock position, the loading gate is opened, the cylinder rod release button is pushed in, the cylinder rod is slid forward enough to clear the cylinder, and the cylinder is rotated outward from the revolver, from the right side. Assembly is just as simple. Bring the hammer to the half-cock position, rotate the cylinder into the frame until the ratchet is clear of the hand. Push the cylinder rod latch inward until it bottoms out against the frame. Check the cylinder rod release button to ensure that it is fully engaged with the cylinder rod detent. Pull the hammer fully to the rear, then, while holding the thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger and slowly release the hammer all the way into the frame. It needs to be noted that unlike the SAA with its four cocking positions, the Bisley has only two cocking positions, half cock and full cock. And, lest I forget, Whenever I am dry firing one of these Uberti single action cartridge revolvers, I use snap caps from Azum to protect the firing pin from damage. Now, let's talk about some range time. As with any of these early type of revolvers, safety is first. That means that only five is loaded and the revolver is carried on an empty chamber. The Bisley was no different and a Uberti reproduction of this revolver is no different. After the Uberti Bisley was properly prepared, it was time to send some lead downrange. This day, I was especially interested in what shooting stance would offer the best results with the Bisley, shootist or duelist. Unlike the common straight arm shooting styles, the recommended Bisley style was to aim with the wrist and elbow bent. Bear with me a bit as I digress and tell you about the Bisley matches. According to Hugh, B.C. Pollard's The Book of the Pistol and Revolver, the Bisley matches were timed events with targets staged at 20 yards, then moved to 50 yards as contestants were thin from the ranks. The contestants could only use one hand with no additional support from their body. 
The targets were timed and only visible during a three-second window. During those three seconds, the shooter had to raise the pistol from the shooting rail, aim and fire before the targets disappeared again for three seconds. Only one shot was allowed during each appearance of the target, and when the target disappeared, the pistol had to be lowered so it was touching a shooting rail. The recommendation was to practice the timing with a metronome. I must give these competitors credit where credit is due. This took a lot of coordination between the thumb and shooting finger to pull off, let alone aim and hit the target. Each match consisted of 12 shots. At 20 yards, the shooter was given 60 seconds to fire six shots. At 50 yards, the shooter was given 90 seconds. My day was to simply check for function and to see what kind of accuracy I could pull off the first handling of the revolver. A silhouette target at 7 yards would work for function and would tell me what I needed to know about my capabilities with the Bisley. The Bisley, as expected, performed without flaw and the sights were as close to point of aim as they could be. Firing from a duelist position garnered the best performance as best as I could hold the Bisley, which is shaky at best. The trigger is one of the best I have pulled. The hammer, being in close proximity with the cocking thumb, ensured positive and quick cocking of the revolver. Once I had the Bisley dialed in, I was gaining more confidence with it, and it is one fine shooting replica. In the days of the Old West, the Bisley revolver would have been carried in a myriad of ways. In today's time, not so much. In fact, you might only find the Bisley carried during Single Action Shooting Society, SASS, or Cowboy Action Shooting, CAS matches, and the like. Uberity can keep bringing us these timeless classic revolvers, in my opinion. Although manufacturers like Ruger bring us modern-day reasonable facsimiles of revolvers like the Ruger Bisley, a more near-perfect replica is more likely to help us harken back to times more when these six shooters were in their heyday. Whenever I need to slow down my life a bit, a range day with a good single-action revolver of cartridge or percussion type, or a single-shot black powder percussion pistol or a rifle, is a welcome relief for me. If you would like to slow your life down a tad, perhaps a Sizzly or any single-action army revolver just might do that for you.